My name is Alan Scott and I'm the author of the Storm Series set of books. Today I'm going to read one of my, or a bit of the story called A Firm Hand. This is not a nice story, it's not supposed to be and was very difficult for me to write um, for many, many reasons. However, um, since I'm in the middle of writing the second trilogy, the Mansa trilogy, uh, this story very much relates to one of the main characters. A lot of people don't like this character, um, but do you, but this story will give a bit of understanding to his background and why he is like he is. But like I said, this is not an easy story to read. Um, it's not supposed to be. A Firm Hand by Alan Scott This story takes place 20 years before the events in my novel Echoes of a Storm. Hubert crashed shoulder first into the wall and slid to the ground. Get up, you little piece of shit, screamed his stepfather as he stalked towards him. Be a man. The 13-year-old boy groggily got to his feet and wiped the free-flowing blood from his cut lip. I put good food on the table and you refused to eat it. What gives you the right to say no to me? The man's backhand snapped to Hubert's head round to the right. Well, I asked you a question. Hubert remained silent. He knew that to answer Jake's question would only anger him more. Instead, he looked pleadingly at his mother who sat at the table, eyes downcast trying to look small and visible. Please, he silently mouthed. His mother reached for a bottle of gin that sat on the table with a shaken hand and poured herself a large measure into a wooden mug. Steadfastly, she refused to look at her son. Do you think your mother will help you? asked Jake as he grabbed Hubert's hair and forcibly dragged him back to the dinner table. Well, Alicia, are you going to help your son? Are you going to turn him into a mummy's boy? No, Jake. A boy needs a firm hand. Isn't that right, Alicia? Yes, Jake, said Alicia before taking a large swallow from her mug. Slamming Hubert's head into the table and pinning it there, Jake grabbed a handful of the warm, greasy stew. Open your mouth, you sorry little fucker. Hubert kept his mouth firmly shut as he struggled to escape from Jake's fierce grip. Smearing the stew over Hubert's face, Jake growled, Eat it. Hubert looked at his mother through tear-filled eyes, pleading for her to help him. Alicia kept her eyes on the mug. Hubert, eat the food Jake has been kind enough to provide. Hubert opened his mouth and Jake stuffed a handful of stew in. Swallow, commanded Jake. Stifling his natural action to be sick, Hubert closed his eyes and swirled a greasy mess down his throat. Jake let go of Hubert and let him slip to the floor. You sicken me and your mother, you sorry excuse for a boy. Look at you, lying on the floor like a little girl. Jake gave a hard kick to Hubert's backside. Get out of my house. Jake kicked Hubert again. Get out now. Hubert scrambled to his feet and ran to the door. Flinging it open, he raced outside. Jake pointed at the open door and screamed at Alicia, Look at what your poor excuses son has done. He is so rude and stupid. He did not shut the fucking door. I'll shut it, Jake, said Alicia hurriedly, as she quickly stood up and closed the door. It's your fucking fault, Alicia. Your son is so fucking soft and disrespectful, said Jake, as he sat down at the table and wiped his hands on the tablecloth. Taking all of the spoon, he started to shovel large spoonsfuls of the evening dinner into his mouth. Taking her seat opposite her husband, Alicia picked up the gin bottle and poured herself another large mugful. He drank too much. Alicia raised the mug and took a drink. Jake walked her intensely. I said, you drink too much, Jake repeated as he made, for the grab for, as he made a grab for the bottle of gin. Alicia's hand snaked in and grabbed the bottle before Jake could. Take my bottle and I'll claw your stinking eyes out, hissed Alicia, her face an ugly picture of rage. 
Jake laughed a cruel short laugh, picking up his spoon, he continued to ladle the stew into his mouth. Before, between, between mouthfuls, he said, That's what I love about you, Alicia. You value Jin over anything else, even your own son, the piece of crap that he is. Alicia shot an evil look at Jake and took a drink as she held the gin bottle close to her. You leave poor Hubert alone, he's a good boy. <laughs> Jake snorted and took a drink from his own mug. He is. He's all that I've got left of my old husband, said Alicia mournfully. Jake sneered. Well, he's been dead for three years now. Found bludgeoned to death in the back alley, his head smashed open, his brain spread across the ground. You really are a nasty piece of work, and you're a fucking alcoholic whore, laughed Jake. If it wasn't for me, you and your precious brat would have been tossed out of this house and be begging on the streets. Pointing spoon at, at Alicia, Jake continued, You owe me. I saved you and that fucking piece of at the birth of yours from the streets. No man would want to take you on to support another man's son, and you know that. I know, whispered Alicia. No man would want such a plain-looking woman like you. I know. No man would want an alcoholic bitch like you. I know. What are you, Alicia? I'm lucky. Look at me and say that. Alicia raised her head and looked at Jake. I am lucky. Say like you mean it, you fucking bitch, and smile. Alicia smiled a lovely smile. Jake, my darling, I am extremely lucky that you are looking after me and my son. That's better, smiled Jake as he leered at Alicia's breast. Wiping his mouth the back of his hand, Jake stood up and walked around to Alicia. Alicia hurriedly drained the last of her gin from her mug and stood up. Jake grabbed Alicia and kissed her roughly, forcing his tongue deep in, into her throat before spinning her around. Jake ran his hands over Alicia's breast as he kissed her neck. What do you want me to do to you? I want you to fuck me like the cheap slut I am, replied Alicia. Bend Alicia over the table ground, spread you like slut. You know you like it rough. Yes, I am a cheap slut. Who likes it rough, said Alicia, as she stared dead-eyed at the walls in front of her. Hubert ran through the darkened streets as tears streaked his dirty face. I hate you, I hate you, he chanted with every step. His wild flight soon took him to the edge of the small town and into the walls beyond. Ignoring the dangers of running in the dark, Hubert continued his flight. Leaping fallen tree trunks that loomed out of the gloom, barging through the undergrowth that was threatened to trip him at any moment until he got to his destination. Slung to a walk, he moved to the stream's edge and fell to his knees. Carefully, he dipped his hands into the cold water as the tut started to clean his face. Next, he ran his hands through his hair, picking out chunks of meat that stuck there and throwing them aside. Finally, bowing his head low to the water, he did his best to wash his hair clean of any remnants of the stew that was stuck there. Feeling cleaner, he waited a moment for the stream to carry the dirty water away before scooping up a handful of water and taking a drink. Closing his eyes, he knelt upright and dragged his shirt over his head. Shivering in the cold night air, Hubert opened his eyes and started and stared into the dark moonlight water before plunging his shirt into the stream and starting to scrub it clean. He scrubbed vigorously before raising and slamming the shirt back into the shallow water. Balling the shirt around his fist, he slammed it again into the water. Angry rage and frustration filled him as he slammed his fist violently back into the water, again, and again, and again, and again, For breathlessly he stopped. Unraveling his top from his hand, he placed it next to him on the ground. Breathing heavily, Hubert shuddered as the anger left him and the chill of the night air washed over him. Reaching out, he picked up his shirt, stood up, and slowly he started to make his way upstream for about half a mile, until he reached a rough makeshift shelter. Placing his wet shirt on the outside, Hubert clambered in and wrapped an old worn blanket around him. 
Curling up to the fetal position, Hubert closed his eyes and waited until sleep stole them away from the horrors of the day. Okay, I'm going to stop the reading of uh, From Hand there. Um, if you want to read the complete story, obviously it's in um, the book of short stories called Stories for a Storm-Filled Night. Um, like I say, not an easy story to write, not an easy story to read or listen to, I presume. Um, but it does explain one of the main characters um, and why he is what he is in this next trilogy that I'm writing. As always, no part of this publication may be reproduced, stored in our retrieval systems, or transmitted in any form or by any means electronic, mechanical, full copying, recording, or otherwise, without the prior permission of the author, i.e. me. This is a work of fiction. All characters and events portrayed in this book are fictional, and any resemblance to real people or incidents is purely coincidental.